Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson. Today, we are going to continue with our main topic, longitude and latitude. And what we are going to do today is solving more problems. So let's begin. So after completing the very lesson today, my dear student, will be able to solve more problems involving the distance along great cycles and also more problems involving distance along uh, parallel of latitudes. This is what we are going to do after completing the very lesson today. So as usual, my dear student, in your favorite segment of the lesson that is more is fun today, I'm happy to give you another relationship between sequence of odd numbers and the square numbers, which means we can now generate uh, square numbers from the sequence of odd numbers, and I'll show you how you can do that after completing the very lesson today. So don't go away. My dear student, as we are taking more problems in this very lesson, let's just start with the very first one. This problem says a plane starts at the point X and the location of the point X is latitude to the 15 degree north and the longitude to the 30 degree east. That plane flies the due west to another airport Y. And that plane, it uses time 12 hours to reach Y at a speed of 500 km per hour. The question asked in this question is to find the longitude of the town Y or the airport Y. Solution to this very problem. That airport X is on the latitude to the 15 north and the longitude 30 east. So let's have a sketch of that. This is the longitude 30 degree east and this is the latitude 15 degree north. So therefore, this is the location of the airport X. So that plane starts from this very airport and it flies due west. Due west means uh, if uh, you are moving in the western direction from this very point, uh, you now move along the, this very latitude towards this direction. From X, you now move in this direction. So moving due west, as is said in the question, means uh, moving along same latitude. So Town Y or Airport Y will now be having the same latitude as Airport X. So Y will now be somewhere here along this very latitude. So let me just mark the position of Y. If this is the position of Y and it happens to be on this very longitude, which I will now find later on in the question. So this is the longitude of Y, but this longitude of Y is not known. Is what I would like to find in this very question. So the distance travel will now be nothing but the length of this very arc, uh, and this arc is of an angle theta, and the radius of this very latitude is now denoted by small letter r. So this length of arc is given by the formula, remember, theta over 360 multiplied by 2 by capital R cos 15. 15 is the angle of the common latitude, look at it. Look at it, look at it, angle of the common latitude. The two towns X and Y are having same latitude, 15 degree north. And remember this small r, always resolve it in terms of r. And what we use is capital R cos gamma, where gamma is the angle of the common latitude. So I have replaced this r in this very formula by capital R cos 15 degrees. So this distance, like I have said, can be calculated using this time and the speed. Remember in your physics, distance, distance is given by speed multiplied by time. So that same distance from x to y can be obtained by multiplying the speed 500 and the time they take and 12 hours to get the distance between the two airports. So I'm going to have 500 speed multiplied by 12 for the time they take and that gives me total distance 6,000 kilometers, which means from X to Y, this length of this arc is 6,000 kilometers. Then I can now come back to this very formula and substitute the length XY by 6,000, substitute my R, substitute my pi, then I will now get this very theta. It is this theta that I'm going to use after obtaining it to find the longitude of Y, because this theta is nothing but the difference between the longitude of X and the longitude of Y. So if I can get the difference, I can now use that very difference to find the longitude of Y. This is what I'm doing. 
So, let me just substitute in this very formula length xy is 6000. I'm going to have 6000 equals to theta, which I would like to find over 360 multiplied by 40,000. 40,000, look at it, is given in the question is the size O is the value of this 2 pi r combined together 2 pi r. So I have substituted this 2 pi r by 40,000. Then times the value, of course, 15. If you do it with your calculator, you have 0 0.9659. So I continue. So I'm targeting to get this theta. So I'll make a theta subject of the formula. So that theta would now be equal to 6,000 multiplied by 3660. The result divided by 40,000 multiplied by 0 0.9659. If you do this multiplications correctly and the division, you now have your theta to be equal to 55.90 degrees. This is the size of this angular theta, which I said is the difference between longitude x and longitude y. This 55.9, the size of this value difference as a theta is bigger than this 30. So, which means it's not a subtraction. If it is not a subtraction done, it means uh, the two airports X and Y are in different uh, sites or in different direction, which means it's addition that we have done to get this 55.9. So, which means Y must be in the western direction. So, therefore, I can now assume that uh, longitude of Y plus the longitude of X is what gives this value 55.9. So let me just write that very equation and get the longitude, the longitude of y. So I'm going to have my theta to be equal to longitude of x, which is the 30 degree east plus the longitude of y, is what can only give us this theta to be 55.9. It's not a subtraction like I have said. There. You cannot subtract. Uh, the something from 30 to get this 55.9. So I'll now substitute my theta with 55.9 and my longitude of x with 30 to get this longitude of y. So, so rearranging will now have longitude of y to be equal to 55.9 minus 30. And this subtraction, if done correctly, you now have 25.9 degree west. The longitude of y must be west because uh, of the addition that we have done it to get this difference of theta 55.9. So let me just move and take one more example. Example number two it says uh, a plane starts at the point x and the location of the point x is uh, latitude 35 degree north and the longitude 10 degree east and that plane flies due east. Uh, to another airport Y and the airport Y is on the location 35 degree north and 30 degree east. After reaching Y, that same plane now then flies due south to another airport Z and that airport Z is on location 20 south latitude and 30 degree east longitude. The question asked is to find the total distance that traveled by this very plane. Solution to this is very question. If I go back to the question, the plane start at X, move to airport Y, from airport Y, move to another airport Z. What we do all the time is to have a sketch and have the positions of those three airports on the Earth surface. So let me start uh, looking at X and Y, town X or airport X and Y, they have uh, common latitude to 35 degree north, 35 degree north. Look at it, 35 degree north, 35 degree north. So let's have uh, that latitude first. So the two airports X and Y are on the latitude 35 degree north. This is my latitude 35. Then I can now mark the position of this airport X, which means I will now draw this longitude 10 degree east. Let me have it. This is my 10 degree east. So this is the position of the airport X. Then this plane start from this x and move eastern direction. Eastern direction means uh, moving along the same latitude, same latitude. And uh, it reaches this y and y is on longitude, uh, longitude 30 degree east. So let me draw my longitude 30 degree east. This is longitude 30 degree east. 
and this will now be the position of the airport uh, Y. You can see the longitude of the airport Y is 30 east, and you can see Y is on same latitude 35 degree north. Then this plane, after reaching Y, it now take off again and move to another airport Z, and this airport Z is says uh, due south, uh, due south from Y. Due south means uh, moving along the same longitude. Same longitude, look at it. To this airport Z. Airport Z is on the latitude 20 south. And the uh, longitude 30 east, you can see the same longitude 30 east. So let me draw my latitude the 20 degrees south. Look at it. So this will now be the position of the airport Z. You can see from Y and the Z, the two are on same longitude because that plane from Y, it now move uh, along uh, southwards, fly south. South means along same longitude. So this is it, how it moves from X to Y, then from Y to Z. The question asks is to find the total distance travel. So total distance travel will now be the length of this arc XY plus the length of arc YZ. So let's just do that. So starting with the arc XY, that is the distance from X to Y. That distance X to Y is distance along the parallel of latitude. And that latitude is 35 degree north. You can see that arc so theta and angle theta. And the radius of that latitude is small letter R, which we always resolved in terms of capital letter R. So starting with the length XY, the length XY is given by the formula theta over 360 multiplied by 2 pi R capital cos 35. 35 is the angle of that very latitude. So we now find this very theta. You can see theta is the angle subtended by this arc which we now said theta would now be difference in the longitudes of x and y. And looking at the longitude of x and y, you can see one is 30 and the other one is 10. Both of them east, so we now subtract 10 from 30 to get this very theta. So let me do that. I'm going to have 20 as my theta. That is 30 minus 10. Divided by 360 multiplied by 40,000. This is what we have as the value of 2 pi r combined together. Then multiplied by 0 0.8192. This will now be the value of cos 35 if you use your calculator to find it. And then multiplying this and dividing correctly, you now have uh, 1,820 kilometers as the distance from x to y. So I'll now continue to find the distance from Y to Z. That is the distance travel from airport Y to airport Z. And that will now be nothing but the length of this very arc. Look at the arc YZ. That arc YZ subtend an angle all per the center of that very longitude and have radius of that longitude equals to capital letter R. Remember this. Is distance along longitude and longitude, remember, we call it a great cycle. So it's now we are calculating distance along a great cycle. And that formula will now be equals to distance yz equals to alpha angle subtended by that longitude over 360 multiplied by 2 pi capital R. Remember this in one of our previous lessons, distance along a great cycle. So I'll now find my alpha. My alpha will now be this angle subtended by this very arc YZ. And uh, this would now be nothing but the difference in the different uh, latitudes, 35 north and 20 south, which we add because it is different directions, north and south. That will give us our alpha. So addition of 35 and 20 will give us answer 55. That will be my alpha, 55 over 360 multiplied by 40,000, this is the value of 2 pi r combined given in the question. So multiplying and dividing correctly will give a result of 6,111 kilometers as the distance from y to z. But remember the question says we have to find the total distance traveled by that plane. So total distance will now be nothing but the two distances added together. That is the distance from x to y, that is the length of this arc. And the distance yz, the distance of length of this very arc. So substituted, I now have uh, 
I now have 1,820 plus 6,111. And this addition done correctly gives you 7,931 kilometers. This will now be the total distance traveled by the plane. Because the few examples given here, I hope you'll be able to solve more and more in-depth problems on the distance along great cycles and the distance along parallel of latitude. This is the end of this very lesson. My dear student, let me thank you for your attention. And let me just move to the last segment. Mass is fun and I explain how you can form square numbers from the sequence of odd numbers. So it says uh, in the sequence of odd numbers, the sum of the very first n terms in the sentence as n square. Let's just have the sequence of odd numbers so that we can explain that this very relationship. This is your sequence of odd numbers starting with 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. So let me just start. So taking the very first number, that is n is 1. And addition of the number here is only one number, so I'm having 1 equals to 1. So I'll continue. So this one is the same thing as 1 raised to the power of 2. That is 1 square. Let me just move. You get it better when I move next. So I'm now take uh, n equals to 2. That is uh, number of terms to be 2. That is first two terms. Addition of 1 and 3 will give me result 4. And this 4 will now be, if you write it in index form, it will give you 2 raised to the power of 2. So you can see if n is to 2, the result will now be 2 square. That is, uh, if you take n terms, first n terms, the sum there will now give you n square. As you can just see, but let's just see more so that you get it better. Let me take first three terms. That is my n is now 3. First three terms, so addition of 1, 3, and 5 will now be equals to 9. And this 9 written in index form will now be equals to 3 raised to the power of 2, that is 3 square. You can see 3 and this number n3. Let me take one more. That is, if n is 4, first four terms, addition of 3, 1, 5, and 7 will now give a result to 16. And 16 in index form is now 4 square. You can see 4 here and this 9, n equals to 4. So some of the very first four terms is now giving you four square. Let me just take uh, one more, n5. So some of the very first five terms, if we done correctly, it gives you 25. And the 5, 25 square will now be, that is 25 written in index form, will give you five square. And you can see this five square and this. So this is your sequence of all the numbers. And from that sequence, I can, you can see how you can now form the square numbers 